The region we know today as Norway rose from glaciation around 12,000 BC, resulting in a huge land being available for humans to colonize, which they did. Around 4000 BC, farming was researched in the Norwegian tech tree. Many centuries later, around 500 BC, the climate warmed enough to allow bigger food production, which consequently led to more natives and bigger settlements. Around this time, the Celts introduced ironworking to the locals, which, once again, resulted in a population boom due to improved farming methods. It was around this time that the Viking social structure was created. When sons got married, they would stay in the same house as their family with their new wife, which would create an extended family or a clan. The clan would always offer protection to other clans and if conflicts arose, the issue would be decided at a thing. A thing is a sacred place where all free men from surrounding areas where the dispute had rose would assemble in order to solve it. This place could also determine the punishments for local crimes, and a common thing at the time was the payment of fines using food. Around the 1st century AD, the Norwegian clans started to be culturally influenced by the Roman Empire, resulting in the adaptation of Roman letters, which later evolved into their own alphabet, the runes. The Romans traded luxury items for Norwegian furs and skins, and soon many locals served as Roman mercenaries. It is also around this time that some powerful farmers started to become chieftains, functioning as priests and accepting sacrifices from the farmers they oversaw in order to pay soldiers for their protection. Thus, these chieftains were able to control several settlements and tribes. Their power only increased as the Great Migration period between 400 and 550 AD saw many Germanic tribes migrate northwards, and the locals wanted more protection resulting in the first usage of simple fortifications and further centralization of power within the local chieftains. In the 6th century, a plague struck the population, resulting in numerous farms being depopulated, although in the next century the latter had already been repopulated. This century also saw a huge boom in the fishing industry, with several fishing hamlets being constructed throughout the Norwegian coast, as well as trade, especially of iron and soapstone, across the North Sea. Some chieftains were able to control most of the trade, which increased their power a lot throughout the 8th century, which was used to kickstart the Norwegian Viking Age. The Viking Age was a period where the Scandinavians expanded their influence intercontinentally. Yes, intercontinentally! The Vikings were the first Europeans to reach America, long before Christopher Columbus. They even raided and settled in North Africa and the Middle East. This expansion was made through trade and, as mentioned before, colonization and raids. The start of this age is considered to be the Lindisfarne Raid in 793, which was one of the first. The seafarer culture of the Vikings was only possible due to their invention of the longship, which was very suitable for sea travel, as well as innovations in navigation techniques such as the compass, as well as the use of a crystal called Iceland Spar, which was used to navigate in cloudy days, since its light polarizing property could be used to tell the direction of the sun. The Viking raiders were well equipped armor-wise, as well as had a very good training, but on top of that, had a huge psychological advantage against the ones they raided, since in their Norse religion it is believed that one would go to Valhalla, their version of heaven, if one would die in combat. The first raids were a very profit-heavy activity, but besides gold and silver, their raiders also took home several amounts of thralls, which is the name given to a slave in Scandinavian lands. These were used to farm while the majority of Viking men were raiding overseas, leaving the control of the slaves to the women. To focus more on the Norwegian theater of the raids, we must focus on Western Norway, which had very few arable lands suitable for agriculture, and this caused many Norwegians to travel into the sparsely populated areas of Shetland, Orkney, the Faroe Islands and the Hebrides in order to colonize them. These ones combined would later become the Kingdom of the Isles. Around the 800 AD, many Norwegian Vikings settled in the east coast of Ireland and founded many cities such as Dublin. If you want to know more about Irish history, check our video series about Ireland. 
In the mid 9th century, the largest Norwegian petty kingdom started a power struggle as Harald Fairhair had started the process of unifying Norway. This unification happened after the decisive Battle of Heifjord around 870 to 900 AD and got crowned the very first king of Norway. He is also responsible for the introduction of many basic concepts of administration to the kingdom as he set up stewards all around his kingdom in the former most important chieftain estates. Around 874, Iceland was discovered and many migrated there. By 930, the island was already divided among 400 Norse chieftains. The very same year, Harald Fairhair's son, Hakon the Good, followed his father as king of Norway. During his reign, he created two large things in all of Norway where the king would meet with the freemen of the land to make decisions. He would also establish the Lidang, which was a conscription-based military. Hakon died in 961, as war had already broke out between the Fairhair dynasty and Earls of Lod, which were allied with the Danish kings. The war led to a Pyrrhic victory for the Norwegians and, as the king died in a war, the throne was succeeded to the losing side of the war, making Harald Greycloak the new king of Norway. At last, in 980, a group of Icelanders led by the Norwegian-born Erik the Red discovered Greenland and settled there. As a continuation of this fairer tradition, his son, Leif Eriksson, discovered Newfoundland around 1000, naming it Vinland, although unlike the former, there were no permanent settlements to be established there. Thanks for watching this seafarer adventure and if you enjoyed the videos to be sure to pilot and rate the subscribe button. See you in the next video!